So it's indictment watch again in the coming days, perhaps weeks, former President Donald Trump could be indicted for the third time for his alleged efforts to ruthlessly cling to power after losing the 2020 presidential election. And as we await Trump's legal fate, there really is no one better to talk to than my next guest. As a former member of the January 6th Select Committee, he spent nearly two years painstakingly investigating the events that led up to the violent attack on our Capitol on January 6th, 2021. Joining me now is Maryland Congressman Jamie Raskin, former lead house impeachment manager and the author of Unthinkable, Trauma, Truth, and the Trials of American Democracy. Congressman, it's an honor to have you join the show this morning, and especially on this important topic. Um, I wanted to start with the following. In its final report, the January 6th committee made specific criminal referrals to the DOJ regarding actions taken by Trump and his supporters. And these referrals included conspiracy to defraud the United States and obstruction of an official proceeding, which are confirmed to be in the target letter that was served on Donald Trump. Is this what you envisioned, Congressman, as the final step of accountability for what you've called Donald Trump's true legacy, American carnage? I think the central component, Katie, of what we advocated um, is present there. Um, conspiracy to interfere with and obstruct a federal proceeding. That was obviously the entire plot that day. Um, and conspiracy to defraud the United States, essentially to cheat us out of an honest election by replacing the actual electoral college process, which is created in federal and state law, with these counterfeit electors, which even the people participating were calling the fake electors. Um, what's missing, at least reportedly, because we haven't seen any actual indictment, but what appears to perhaps be missing is um, the count on aiding and abetting, uh, assisting and giving aid and comfort to insurrection. Uh, and that uh, statute is um, much less tested, much less charged, and it may be that the prosecutors are considering it's too difficult to go that far. But we found overwhelming evidence that Donald Trump had aided and assisted the insurrection. He'd incited the insurrection, as the House of Representatives uh, found in the impeachment article. Um, and he certainly gave aid and comfort to the insurrectionists both um, before and during the insurrection when he tweeted out that Mike Pence did not have the courage to do what needed to be done. And then even afterwards, when he praised them for their work, told them to remember this day forever, never forget it. And he has continued to uh, aid and abet and give aid and comfort to the insurrectionists, going so far as to saying he may issue a pardon for all of them today. But in any event, that if the reports are to be believed, that's not part of what Jack Smith's team is looking at now. They seem to be focused on what seems overwhelmingly and indisputably clear, which was the plan to interfere with the counting of electoral college votes, obstruct the peaceful transfer of power, and substitute the actual electoral process with a counterfeit one. Congressman, I'm glad that you brought up that incitement of insurrection, because many people may not remember, but Trump was impeached for incitement of insurrection. You obviously know that very well. It was one of the charges that you just mentioned that the 1-6 committee referred to the DOJ. So in your opinion, and I know we don't know what the final charges are, but I mean, do you think it would be a mistake for special counsel Jack Smith not to pursue that specific charge against the man who was responsible for January 6th, the man who you just noted, issued a call to arms for his foot soldiers, many of whom have been prosecuted by the DOJ? Well, as you observe, he's already been impeached by the House of Representatives for inciting an insurrection against the union. And in fact, uh, the Senate voted 57 to 43 to corroborate those charges. Now, we did not reach the two-thirds threshold, the 67 votes we needed in order to convict him. And yet you have robust, bipartisan, bicameral majorities in both the House and the Senate defining as a legislative fact that he did it. Um, the making of the statutory proof uh, beyond a reasonable doubt, of course, is something that's going to be within the province of the prosecutors to determine. And if it ends up not being on the list of charges, perhaps they feel that that one is not as open and shut a case. I don't know. That's, you know, uh, speculating as to what um, is in there. In any event, 
uh, conspiring to interfere with the counting of Electoral College votes, to block the peaceful uh, transfer of power, and to defraud the American people out of an honest presidential election uh, themselves are extremely grave and solemn charges, even if uh, the prosecutors decide not to go one step further. In any event, it does, I think, underscore, um, you know, the, the subtlety, the complexity, and the care with which the prosecutors appear to be acting. There's recent reporting that suggests that the Trump war room at the Willard Hotel has been a key focus of special counsel Jack Smith's investigation. We know through the evidence and the information that your committee presented to the American public that meetings took place there between Steve Bannon, Rudy Giuliani, John Eastman, and other Trump cronies, as well as a critical phone call on January 5th, just one day before the insurrection, with Trump, Giuliani, and others. But Congressman, that also, that, that war room concept, that was a big part of the 1-6 Committee's investigation. Is this a good example of how the Select Committee's investigative powers were somewhat limited by time and maybe subpoena compliance versus what Special Counsel Jack Smith was able to accomplish with the full force of the DOJ behind him? Well, obviously, they have a lot more resources at their disposal, and the, the total power of subpoena that um, no one is really going to mess with. Um, Trump and his followers would invite us to believe that all of this was some kind of uh, spontaneous um, eruption at a rally that just got a little bit out of control. No, uh, this was a very clear concerted plot that took place over many weeks to overthrow the results of the 2020 presidential election. And it included trying to get state legislatures to void out the Biden slates and replace them with uh, the Trump slates. It included direct overtures to state election officials like Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger in Georgia to get them to just find me 11,780 votes. It involved an attempt to conceivably overthrow the Department of Justice leadership to install someone who would assert corruption. And finally, it involved a very concerted plan to try to get Vice President Pence to step outside of his constitutional role and to exercise lawless extra constitutional powers simply to declare Trump president or to kick the whole election into the House of Representatives for a so-called contingent election where the states would be voting one state, one vote, rather than each of us members voting in that way. So this was a very carefully orchestrated and choreographed plot to overthrow the election. There was nothing spontaneous or out of control about it. You know, Congressman, I have to say goodbye to you because I'm out of time, but I did want to say thank you to you and the members of the 1-6 Committee. Your mission was different than, obviously, what Jack Smith has as special counsel at the DOJ, but I am a firm believer that you provided, kind of like what I was talking to Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson about, a blueprint. You provided, I think, a foundational basis. You weren't operating in a vacuum, nor was the investigation that you did for 18 months to be able to, I think, help Jack Smith in his ultimate prosecution of Donald Trump. Congressman Jamie Raskin, thanks for joining us this morning. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.